Our first presenter of the second half, right after you've just gotten liquored up, is Ivy Taylor. The mayor of San Antonio is coming up here in a moment. She was elected mayor June 13, 2015, after fulfilling that unexpired term for 11 months. She had served as the District 2 City Council representative since June of 2000. District 2, dude, man! Uh, is that Alan Warwick right there? I'm not sure. Mayor Taylor worked at the Departments of Housing and Community Development and Neighborhood Action, Merced Housing Texas and UTSA. She holds degrees from Yale University and the University of North Carolina, a devoted wife and mother. Please give it up for Mayor of San Antonio, Ivy Taylor. Wow, wow. Hello, San Antonio. Oh, this is going to be much easier now because the lights in my face, I can't see you, so I'm not quite as nervous since I can't see the faces. Well, this has been an extraordinary evening. I'm so glad to be here tonight. I'm warning you, I don't think my presentation is going to be too funny, but it's very personal. So I'm glad to have the opportunity to share a little bit about myself. My presentation has the title, Breakfast Books and Buildings. These are sources of inspiration for me, so let's get to it. All right, there's the breakfast, there's the books, and there's a building. So these are things that motivate me, that get me excited every single day and help me stay focused on making our community a better place. Those waffles were at a bed and breakfast in Houston and were quite delicious. Now. I was really excited to have a chance to do this because a lot of people found, have found me to be mysterious. Even though I think I'm an open book, they think I'm mysterious or they have an image of me. So this is a great chance for you to get to know the woman who serves as your mayor and what motivates me and inspires me every day. So there we start with the breakfast. Waffles and shrimp and grits. Now, I am a breakfast person. Everybody that knows me knows I have to have breakfast. I don't miss breakfast. There's something about breakfast. I know obviously I don't eat like this every single day, but the promise of an excellent breakfast means it's gonna be a great day. My great day started in Queens, New York, in this lovely brick house that my parents bought in 1976. And this is me on my high school graduation with a neighbor from across the street. It was a great place to grow up and a great place to live. My parents kept the inside immaculate and my dad kept the outside great. Now, we didn't get exposed to a lot of the wonderful things that were available for us in New York because my parents attended a holiness church. So I lost myself in a world of books. And these are some of the books that inspired me when I was a kid. I probably read Gone with the Wind 10 times. Fast forward, reading all those books got me into Yale. These are some images from Yale. This is a view from my window freshman year. I really found the campus to be inspiring. The buildings there spoke to me the physical environment, and I love thinking about the history and who was there before me. When I got to San Antonio, I married a man who built this house for me. It was 30 miles south of town near Pleasanton. It was more lavish and fabulous than anything I could have imagined in Queens, but I absolutely hated driving 30 miles to get there. We were disconnected from everything that we participated in, uh, church and jobs and so we left there and we moved to the city. We wanted a, an old house but we couldn't find one at that time so we built a house that looked old. So this is a bungalow that we built and I painstakingly picked all the interior details to mimic the 1920s. When Morgan was born we moved around the corner to a ranch style home because all the bedrooms were on one level and I had to be close to the baby. So um, this home was so cozy and inviting, and I love this swing in the front porch that we took a lot of photos of Morgan there when she was a toddler. Now this is where I live today. We moved there in 2008. It is a house built in 1911 on San Antonio's east side. Of course, I love, that's right, east side. I love the historic architecture. I've got a fabulous view of downtown. I'm right across the street from the park. And those east side neighbors got me elected on the city council. This is inside the house. Now, 
This picture, the old picture, is my parents in their 70s glory. Note the picture that's on the wall behind them, and then you see me and Morgan. That's the inside of the house we live in today. And there's the pi same picture that my parents had in their apartment in Brooklyn when I was a kid. Now, we don't really have a great yard, so I have to take Morgan over to the botanical gardens when she wants to enjoy the great outdoors, and I encourage more San Antonians to spend time there. It really is an inspiring place. Okay. I hope this is not going to fall asleep because it says my, the Mac is going to go to sleep soon unless we're plugged into a power outlet. So I should get a couple of seconds for that. But anyway, <laughs> these days, this is my second home. Of course, our San Antonio City Hall. I think it's a pretty inspiring place when you look at its architecture as well as its history. This is what City Hall used to look like. It was built in the 1880s. You can see we kind of chopped off a few of those turrets on the top there, but it is still an inspiring place. Its mission hasn't changed. It's the center of our local government here. Now, the next photo is um, what I think about a lot when I'm at home and at City Hall, places like this. This happens to be an abandoned home on the east side, but there are homes like this all over San Antonio, and I think about who lived here before? Why did they leave? And why do we as a community let places like this sit and rot? Even though there's blight and decay, I see evidence of previous greatness. And then, of course, we have places like this in San Antonio, our fabulous Spanish colonial missions, which recently were designated a World Heritage Site confirms that significance of our city's unique history. And I want, I want all San Antonians to take the time and learn from that heritage. Now, this was a sad, heartbreaking moment in San Antonio. This was in our neighborhood on the east side. A neighboring church almost burned to the ground. And here's the pastor. The congregation did come together to rebuild, but not at the same location. So it is a piece of our San Antonio history that's lost. Similarly, I remember crying when I saw this on the news. I'd spent some time over at Our Lady of the Lake University. I, do you all remember the big fire over there? Um, I was heartbroken when I saw this, but the sisters were determined to rebuild just like Bishop Iglehart from the other picture. And that's a, Our Lady of the Lake is a beacon of hope in one of our most impoverished areas of the city. And so back to that inspiration, going back to when I was a kid, I want other San Antonians to feel that inspiration I felt as a child getting lost in books. And that's why I started the Mayor's Book Club. I encourage everybody to read our current book, which is called The Boy Kings of Texas. And then finally, the work that I do isn't easy, but I feel blessed to be doing it because I still see myself as that little black girl from Queens. Back then, I couldn't articulate my vision or dream for life, but I'm grateful that those breakfast books and buildings I encountered made me stronger and, and want to be able to contribute. Those last images were of the things that inspire me most nowadays, Rodney and Morgan, a few of the books that I've read, and of course, the opportunity to always let my hair down and dance like nobody's watching. Thank you. Well, don't anyway, don't, don't anyway, you would think with the CPS rates going up, we wouldn't have any power uh, problems like that. I don't know. No, but we can get you some water over there if you <laughs> got a little extra cash. Okay, so anyway, uh, tough room. Tough. How do you deal with all the crap that you have to go through to stay a politician? And what keeps you going in that way? Because, you know, some of the campaigns that you've been through, there's been a lot of... It, it's hard. And some of the reporters yeah. out there, it's, it's a little, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what keeps you going through that? Well, you know, some of those images I showed are those small things in life, uh, those daily sources of inspiration for me. And what I relish about tonight was just the chance to share that because I think sometimes people's image of me is shaped around an incident, a vote, or whatever, you know, something small that doesn't give the whole picture. So um, I just try to stay grounded and stay focused on the work that we need to do together as a community. And, and speaking of that, a lot of people are uh, interested in the urban core here, uh, yes. South Town, uh, the Pearl, downtown. Tomorrow, the first uh, grocery store, H-E-B, mm -hmm. opens up. And 
How do you see where we are in terms of creating? How much more do you want to see on your watch created in the urban core, and how are you going to do that? And you know, in ten simple sentences. Oh yeah, we've made we have made tremendous progress. From when I moved to San Antonio in 1998, I mean, when I look at the the vibrancy and the the housing units that we have downtown now, the the supermarket that's coming. So, but I'd like to see a whole lot more. I want to see us continue to focus on residents. I think we've got to focus a little more on uh, businesses, filling up some of these vacant commercial buildings that are downtown as well. Um, and uh, just, you know, to have constant activity, that's one of the reasons I've been talking about baseball, because they have so many games every year. That means there's always people coming through the downtown. Um, so anyway, I think there's a lot of potential, and we've got a lot of things in place. When, to when's the happen. stadium going to be built and where? I don't <laughs> I don't have a timeline uh, on, on the stadium, but we, we're actually, Centro San Antonio is doing a study right now on uh, the financial uh, feasibility and also uh, helping us with some criteria on sites. And, and being from the east side, there's you know, some talk of gentrification, a little controversy there. You showed some of the reasons there needs to. Okay, look, the Dignity Meets people got a little upset again. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's a bone of contention for some people. One way that, that is something that we as a community are going to have to deal with. We are in a much better position than many other cities. There you go. You know, a lot of people are afraid that, you know, they're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to, it's going to be East Austin and East San Antonio. That's not going to happen. We're nowhere near there. We're proactive. I think one of the main things... Forget about the market forces, the price of houses and all that. Let's talk about the cultural side and the emotional side. I think if we can help people to connect, for people to know the history of the areas that they're moving into, for them to connect with people that have been there for years, I think that makes it you know, all go a lot smoother. And so I'd love to help facilitate those There you go, Dick Nowitty Meets. One other thing, I know you, you wanted to talk about something personal you thought about music as presenting tonight? Because uh, tell me about uh, music, you and music. Well, um, I'm trying to play catch up. I, I talked about being sheltered. So during probably 10 years of my life, I was not allowed to listen to secular music. And I've been trying to make up for those 10 years ever, ever since. So, um, you know, I try not to uh, d diminish the dignity of the office that I'm in. But I tell you, if you play well, a certain song, I'm going to get out there and dance. Well, speaking of I that, I think we myself. have a certain song right now. Can we give it up for You said you, dan you like anything danceable, right? Anything danceable. Wait a minute, I think we have something here for you. Little Aretha Franklin. Okay. All right. Randy, you got to you got to dance too. I, I, I will. I have bad news. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mayor Ivy Taylor on the main stage, on the main stage. Make it rain, Ivy Taylor.